having a little trouble today. Um, got this nice sidecar just installed on the Bruff Superior. Spring, sun shining. Went to go for a ride. Bike won't start. So we have a magneto problem. No sparks. Gonna have to have a look at the mag and see if I can fix it. And while I'm doing that, be a good opportunity to have a bit of history on magnetos, a bit of an explanation on how they work. The magneto was invented by Robert Bosch in Germany uh, before the turn of the last century. Robert Bosch's name is still on spark plugs various uh, automotive electrical gadgets, and a uh, company survives. You can see that there's a German Bosch Magneto even on this 1914 Indian. Now the Bosch Magneto on the Excelsior is an American Bosch Mag, reason being Germany lost the war and part of war reparations. A lot of people got to copy Mr. Bosch's patents. The uh, prior to World War I, just about every motorcycle with a Magneto had a German-made Bosch. Other manufacturers were quick to copy Mr. Bosch's patent, including BTH on the left, Lucas on the right, both English companies. There were also American companies like uh, Splitdorf, Dixie, Edison, and so forth. But all the magnetos are basically the same. In fact, they're so similar that some of the parts are even interchangeable. The magneto replaced the, um, originally replaced coil and battery ignition, which was used on motorcycles. But in the old days, they had dry cell batteries, and the coils took a lot of current. So uh, was, there was no way to charge the batteries. They had to switch them all the time. So the magneto was quite an improvement. And of course, things have gone full circle, and uh, the magneto was largely replaced by coil and battery again, except the batteries were now chargeable. They had generators, dynamos, etc. Now, the magneto on the Bruff Superior is actually a magdyno, which has a generator or dynamo sitting on top of it, driven by the gear. Now, the bottom part of the magdyno is the magneto. And that's really the part we're going to discuss today. We'll leave the generator dynamo for another time. In order to dismantle a magneto, before removing the armature from the magneto, you have to take the pickups off because the pickups engage with the Bakelite collector ring. And if they're not removed and you try and force the armature out, you'll break that Bakelite and those things are uh, virtually impossible to find now. There's also sometimes a what's called a safety gap, which is a screw that's in the bottom of the magneto at the collector ring, and that should also be removed. They don't all have those. Next step is the removal of the breaker assembly on the left and the cam ring, which is in the uh, center of the picture. After the end cover is removed, out comes your armature. And it consists of the red thing in the middle is the coil. And on the left is the collector ring, which has a brass contact, which contacts your uh, carbon brushes, which are connected to the wires to your spark plugs. And on the right end, is where the breaker fits and uh, opens and closes the points to make the contact. So at this stage, we better discuss a little bit about how these things actually work. Now this early Lucas Magneto, uh, this is the outer housing, just to show you how it works. As you can see, this the magnet on this one is actually a horseshoe magnet. I've just slid it off the top. Will actually pick up the wrench. 
So that creates a magnetic field that creates the electricity when the coil is rotated inside the housing. The coil section of the armature consists of a piece of iron about which are wrapped two sets of windings. Primary winding, which is a little bit coarser and fewer turns, and the secondary winding, which is very fine wire with many more wraps. The whole idea of this is you generate a low voltage current in the primary winding and that excites the secondary winding and you get several thousand volts of low amperage which is capable of jumping a spark plug. And that's set off by opening and closing the breaker which is on the end of the thing which uh, breaks the or completes the circuit in the primary. On the end of the winding is located, the end of the armature is located the condenser which is pictured on the left and it consists of layers of paper and mica and this really stores current so that the uh, primary circuit can build a large amount of current which is collapsed with the break of the points and that creates the spark. This can be a source of trouble because the uh, the paper in between the mica can get uh, soaked in water, it can get damp, uh, you can have shorts, etc. And what's often what often is done is that the mica insulator will be replaced by a modern solid state condenser, which you can fit into that space. On our Bruff Superior armature, which has been recently rebuilt, we have a solid state condenser and that can be seen just below the coil, replacing the original mica. So that part of it should be okay. Also the coil has been rewound in recent years. Now I'm hoping that the problem is going to be relatively simple, like maybe there's some tracking or a short perhaps behind that um, or in and around that collector ring, so I want to get it off. The first thing I have to do is remove the outer bearing, which I've popped off the screwdriver. Now getting the bearing off the end requires a simple gear, simple puller like the one pictured. Um, don't try and pry that off or you're going to break the uh, Bakelite. Puller is easy to make on a lathe if you happen to be fortunate enough to have one. All is now revealed. You can see that behind the bearing there are some brass shims and these have to be fitted in order to give, when you put it back together, the armature should have about two thou or less end play and spin freely and there shouldn't be any up and down movement at all. I've discovered a hairline crack in that commutator and I've repaired it with some epoxy and wrapped it with some very narrow tape, striping tape actually, but without any metallic in it. You don't want gold or silver. And I've uh, brushed some varnish on the outside. I hope this will cure my problem. Um, otherwise, we'll have to get the coil rewound again, which is going to take some time, and it's a bit of an expensive process. We'll see what happens. Hopefully our trouble isn't the armature. What sometimes happens such as in this old one here. The varnish on the outside gets cracked, water leaches in, and the coils corrode. The coils will test out okay on the bench, but as soon as they get warm, uh, the spark starts to jump in between the coils and you get a very weak spark. So the only way to fix this is rewind the coil. All is now reassembled and back on the cluttered bench. Before putting the armature back together, I heated everything up in the oven at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes, 
just to drive off any moisture that might be present. It's a good idea when you're baking magnetos, generators, uh, crank shaft assemblies or whatever in the oven to make sure that your wife isn't home. They sometimes object. Uh, the other thing to re remember is that if you're doing any electrical repairs of the epoxy, don't forget to use clear epoxy rather than the uh, epoxy that's made for repairing metal because a lot of it contains uh, metal filings which are conductors and that's not what you want with uh, a magneto repair. An electric drill, a bit of wire, are ready for the big test. We got sparks. We're back in business. Now I can go for a ride. I have to put the magneto back on, of course.